So welcome to our second block of the course Investment. In this block we are talking about the investing in common stocks. In the four different topics of this block we will explain uh, what the appeal of common stocks are and why individuals are like to invest in them. We are looking on the stock returns from the historical part and understand how the current returns will be calculated. Then we certainly talk about the uh, basic features of common stocks, especially the stock rotations and the transaction cost. As much as we afterwards in the second topic talking about the different kinds of values. In the third topic from this block we talk about the common stock dividend and the different types and in the last block, sorry, in the last topic we're talking about the different types of stocks. Before we go into the four different topics, let's look at a video. Learning about investing is a lot like learning to ride a bike. At first it may look intimidating or complicated. Dangers seem to be everywhere. That's why it's important to learn the basics and ways you can help minimize risk and protect yourself. After a good amount of practice and learning, you can take the training wheels off and really start riding. Along the way, the roads may change. There'll be good days and bad days. And while learning to ride doesn't guarantee you a spot in the Tour de France, riding a bike could get you where you want to go a little faster. Let's start with the basics and look at one of the most common investments, stocks. A stock represents partial ownership of a company. When you purchase a stock, you're buying a piece or a share of a company. By owning a share, you own a small fraction of the company's assets and have a claim on its future earnings. There are two ways you can make money by investing in stock. The first is through stock appreciation, when a stock you own goes up in value. If an investor bought the stock at one price and the price went up, the investor could then make money by selling the stock to another investor at the higher price. The second way is through a dividend. This is a periodic payment issued by some stocks. A dividend is a way for a company to give a portion of its earnings to shareholders. Here's an example of how stocks work. Suppose there's a company called Bull Flag Cycling. This company makes bikes, really good bikes. The bikes are so good, in fact, the company wants to expand, so it can sell more bikes to people all around the world. To do this, the company needs to raise money, also known as capital. There are a few ways this company could do this. It could take out a loan, but that would mean taking on a significant amount of debt. Or it could issue shares of stock. By issuing stock, which is called going public, the company can raise money without going into debt. Instead, it sells shares of ownership and a claim on future earnings to investors. So let's meet a typical investor. Our investor is someone who has a little extra cash. He's looking for an investment that has the potential to offer better returns than a savings account and he is willing to accept the higher risks of investing in a stock. He thinks Bullflag Cycling is a promising company that's likely to grow. Because of this, he thinks buying a share would be a good investment. So how much does a share cost? Suppose the company decides to raise $1 million, and it decides to issue 1,000 shares of stock. Because each share represents a fraction of the company's worth, and there are 1,000 shares, each share represents 1 1,000th of Bullflag Cycling. Because the company is raising $1 million, at the initial public offering, or IPO, each share would be initially valued at $1,000. Let's suppose the price doesn't change after the IPO, so our investor purchases a single share on the open market through his online stockbroker for $1,000. Now let's see what could happen to his investment. If the company does well and profits increase, the value of the company is likely to go up. As a result, the stock price may increase as well. Assuming the price of the stock goes up, our investor could now turn a profit by selling his shares to another investor in the stock market. However, if the company's ventures don't go as planned, its value could decrease, and so could the stock price. If this happens, our investor could lose money if he decides to sell at the current price. When it comes to investing in the stock market, the basic goal is to buy when prices are low and sell when prices are high. But stocks in the stock market don't always go up. Sometimes they stay the same, and sometimes they go down. And sometimes prices change quickly. Because of this, stocks are considered riskier than other historically safer investments such as bonds or CDs. 
However, investors keep coming back to the stock market. Why? Because with this increased risk comes the potential for greater returns. Savvy investors take precautions to try to minimize risk, like creating an investing plan, adding diversity to their portfolios by investing in a variety of companies, putting money in other investments besides stocks, and learning trading strategies for up, down, and sideways markets. Now you know some of the basics about investing in stocks. Not like learning to So, yeah, well we learned a little bit about the stocks and now we want to see what stocks really have to offer so we go a little bit deeper into the material. First thing is, uh, as we have seen in the uh, video, uh, stock holder is a partial owner of a company. And with this partial ownership, he get the claims on the wealth, meaning he had the claims on the income and he had the claims on the increase of the wealth of the company as much as he has a, in, a claim on the asset of the company. With these kinds of claims, uh, there come some limitations for especially to the lenders because claims of the shareholders are subordinated to the lenders. The debt holders, lenders are getting satisfied first before the owners getting satisfied. And that means if something is not left, meaning there is a negative income, it could be that the stockholders are getting no return. What is the appeal then on the common stocks? We have seen that there are two ways to earn money on common stocks, especially for individuals, but also in uh, institutional investors, the value increase of a stock is the most interesting part. We call it a capital gain. We buy the stocks for 50, we are going to sell the stock at 10 years for 100, though we have an average return of 7% per annum. The other income would be the regular income in form of dividends. The dividends are regular payments out of the uh, profit from the company, and that's what get paid to the shareholders. Now let's have a look on the price behavior of the stocks. In general, we can expect when the market is strong that the investors are earning a lot of money, though they are benefiting from the price appreciation. On the opposite, certainly when the markets are going down, then the returns of the investors are going down. On the historical side, when we look on that from the Standard & Poor's 500, which is one of the major indices, which covers the 500 biggest Public, company, uh, public traded companies of the US market. We have seen that over the period of 1926 to 2017, it had only a 24 times negative return. Though so from the beginning of the year to the end of the year, there had been a negative return. Three quarter of the time, the market had been positive. I mean, if you invested in the year 1926, into the Standard & Poor's $1,000 and you would have kept it until 2017, your investment would be worth $7.3 million. When we look on that on the decades, we see that the two different possibilities to earn money are very different what the volatility concerns. While the dividends of stocks are relatively stable, the capital gains are very volatile. So they could be negative as much as positive returns and the spread is quite big. That means at the end, the total return on stocks is very volatile as well. When we do a look on the chart of the Standard & Poor's 500, we also see here that there is a constant growth, but we also see there have been quite big setups or decreases over the years. Mainly here for uh, 2008, uh, the financial crisis, for example, as much as a dot-com crisis. But at the end, if we take the average return of the Standard & Poor's Index, that will be 9.8% return, which includes certainly then the dividends. 
So we see it is a good investment with good returns, but it also has its risk associated with it. Now what are now the advantages of common stocks? Certainly it provides a substantial return, as we have seen now with the chart and the returns of the Standard & Poor's, and it typically outperforms the bonds. Though in general you get always a higher return than the bonds are providing. Then it protects certainly uh, from inflation. Inflation is something which has to be earned because it's a loss of value of money. And if we have 3% inflation, then we know we can not afford the same on the end of the year than at the beginning. If we have 9.8% return on our stock, then we can afford what we have protected, these 3%. Very important is that stocks can be very easily sold and bought at the market, which we call then the stock market, typically the New York Stock Exchange or the Tokyo Exchange or the London Stock Exchange. Costs are associated with uh, trading stocks as well, which we talk about later anyway. But in general, nowadays, you have to think about 0.5% for the trade. It is very easy to get information for the companies which are traded as stocks on the stock market because that's why they're called public traded. So their informations have to be provided to the public to make decisions whether we want to buy or want to sell the stock, basically to value it. And that's why the companies need to provide these informations to the market. Last but not least, we have the um, units cost uh, per share, which are relatively low. So it's also possible for investors, which does not have as much money, let's say only three, 4,000 to invest or to save, still can invest in stocks because most of the stocks are traded on the market with prices around $2,200. Where are advantages? Certainly there are disadvantages. The main disadvantages are the risk, which are associated with the stock or an investment into a corporate ownership. Mainly the business risk. If the business model of the company is not good, if the product or the services are not demanded, the value of the company goes down, so doing the stock. The financial risk comes with the relationship between the equity and the debt within the company. The more the company is debt financed, the higher is the risk because this money has to be paid back. Purchasing power is economy, though the consumers, the household could have less money, the investors could have less money to invest, uh, though there will be a decrease in the stock market. The overall market risk, we have seen in the financial crisis or in the pandemic, that the market goes down because of concerns about the overall economy. And last but not least, certain events, for example, wars or natural catastrophes can affect the stock prices as well, especially these stock prices, which are mainly hit by these events. Um, very important as we already talked about is the highly volatility of the stocks, though it's very hard to predict whether the stocks go up or down on the market. Then they're providing less current income because many stocks may not offering dividends. That could be. Uh, only capital gain would be then the return and compared to bonds then the returns will be very volatile. Only these companies which are paying dividends may offer all a regular payment. When we look on the payments, we see uh, in comparison the corporate bonds to the US stocks, and we see that the bond market offers a much higher yield 
compared to the dividend yields. In the yield curve of the US stock yields, the capital gains are not included. This is only a comparison of the dividend yields to the corporate bond interest payments. Good. In this topic, we explained a little bit about the uh, why do individuals and institutions like to invest into the stocks, and we described a little bit the historical side from based on the standard of Bruce 500, and that is a good investment, but it is also a risky investment for stocks.